Hi, my name's Will, and in this video we're going to look at how to perform a whole body MRI at 1.5T using the Siemens XA51 software. I'll talk you through sequence positioning, scan acquisition, and creation of B900 MPRs and MIPS. So let's go. We've already loaded the patient's details into the scanner and we're ready to begin. First up is a fast view localizer. This warning pops up to remind us that the scanner is going to move the bed automatically. Remember to warn the patient that this will happen throughout the scan. You can click the inline display button to watch the progress of the localizer. We want to keep a close eye on the localizer because if the patients manage to get through screening with any remaining metallic objects, now's a good time to remove them before we go much further. Once you've performed a number of these scans, you might start to pick up some early warning signs of serious pathology. OK, so our localizer has given us some images, but it's important to note that it hasn't finished its task yet. Notice that the scanner is still performing adjustments while the table's moving, and that you can't see the anterior elements of your body 18 coils. These elements will only display when the adjustments have all completed. It's really important that you don't start to plan any sequences that require those body 18 coils before you can see them on the interface here. Auto coil select won't know to pick up the relevant elements and as a result you'll end up with very noisy images. You can start to plan sequences up to this point here, but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm just going to wait until the adjustments are complete. This takes a while so I've sped it up so we can move on to the next part. This is a comprehensive whole body MRI so you'll see steps here that aren't mentioned in the how to guide. You can skip these if they aren't required as part of your protocol. OK, so I'm going to position the brain localizer and then have a sweep through the axial images looking for any metal artifact on the outside of the patient, which we didn't pick up earlier. If there is any, like I said, now's a good time to stop before you go any further. Looks good, so we'll hit go on that and move on to the spine positioning. In terms of coverage, we want at least skull base superiorly and the whole of S1 inferiorly, and coverage of all vertebral bodies right-left is required. You can ungroup the graphics and angle to curves in the spine if you want to, but remember that the most important thing here is that you cover all of the bone. In this case, I'm just going to leave the slice group straight. You might notice that the anterior elements aren't activating at all while positioning this scan. And that's because we're using the autocoil select mode restricted. You can find this in the system miscellaneous tab. And what we've done here is only allow the scanner to use posterior elements. Once we're happy with our positioning, we can click go and move on. While other me is positioning the brain scan, just some notes on the sagittal whole spine sequences. When adding slices to your T1 sequences, make sure your TR doesn't go too high. And if that happens, you can add a concatenation and reduce the TR again. With the 380 FOV, you can get away with a phase field of view of 120% on a solar. Or you could add another slice group. Just make sure your overlap is set correctly. And as I've said, you can ungroup your graphics for significant curves. Let's move on to the lung scan positioning. For this, you'll want to make sure you've covered the lungs AP, head, foot, and right, left, remembering that the diaphragm will be lower than you can see here because you're going to ask the patient to hold their breath if they're able to. The T15 is our first group of axial whole body images. For this, we want to ensure group graphics is enabled and then position the slice group so that the first slice will be about a centimeter above the skull vertex. Why are we scanning fresh air? Unfortunately, vibes are tricky to get to compose, so we've got to have an overlap with these. This overlap isn't required for the later diffusion slice groups, and so they have fewer slices. 
If you're not high enough here, you might miss the first slice of the skull on the diffusion. In terms of right-left coverage, a good landmark is the humeral heads. Make sure they are equidistant from the edges of the slice group. AP, give yourself equal amounts of fresh air front and back. Remember, don't be tempted to reduce the phase field of view here, as you will affect your SNR. With the overlap on vibes being so tricky to set up, if you find that you need extra slice groups, it might be better to set them up on the diffusion scans first, and then come back here and copy position to the diffusions. The long delay here is because the vibe is sending its positioning information to the diffusion and the haste later on. For any coronal scans, ensure you give yourself plenty of fresh air above the vertex, as the edge of field effects, while much improved versus the air, are still pretty harsh. If you wanted to, you could use more steps with a smaller FOV to get around this, but then you'd need to perform more breath hold scans. If required, adding slices here to achieve AP coverage is fine. Just watch the breath hold length and mitigate it with other parameter changes. You can see here that you can get most of the planning done before the first spine series is reconstructed. This gives you plenty of time to look through your images later. Another delay here while the vibe sends its position information to the haste stir later on. And remember if you want to double check anything you can always open it back up and make some adjustments if necessary. I'm just pausing here for a moment to mention the use of decision steps and the use of renamed pauses as workflow notes. Here I've got a choice to make. Is the patient in the head coil or do they have a pillow? Selecting no pillow loads a sequence using the head coil, whereas if the patient was propped up high on a pillow miles away from the coil, we can choose to use the integrated body coil, which will give better results. You can see here that I've got a reminder to tell the patient about the automatic breathing instructions, and later on to tell the patient to expect that the diffusion scans will be very, very noisy. There's also a note at the end to remind me to record the equipment setup and patient positioning so that the next time the patient comes for a scan, we can perform it in the same way, and this is key to maximising reproducibility. I'm fast forwarding again now, but you can see I'm going into each sequence individually to make sure that everything is correct before I'm happy that we're done. After this, we're going to move on and review our images. OK, so on the View and Go page, you can see that some images have already reconstructed and that I've imported the patient scan from last time. I'm using a 2 by one layout for the comparison of the stir sagittals from today and the last visit. Comparing images like this is crucial in detecting asymptomatic urgent findings like an impending cord or cord requiring compression. If you can find it now, the reporting clinician can be informed and further action can be taken in a timely manner. Depending on the clinical indications for the scan, you may or may not be interested in the degenerative disc disease. If you are, then you might want to plan some dedicated axial scans, but in this case I've determined it's no worse than last time, so we can continue. Now we'll look through the fast flare head images. We'll check for adequate coverage. And remember with this sequence if you're scanning breast cancer patients you need to include the whole mandible. The sequence is run without a fat suppression pulse to look for the low intensity appearance of osteonecrosis of the mandible versus the normal bone marrow. We'll also look for any areas of hyperintensity in the brain which might be an early asymptomatic metastatic deposit. Again, if this is picked up early you might be able to proceed to a contrast enhanced study after discussion with the reporting clinician. Looking through the T1 sagittal spine images, again we're checking for coverage and that the composing has been successful. But again there's been no significant changes so no further action is required in this case. When evaluating the lung scan we want to ensure we've got coverage from apices to bases. And then by applying a heavy HRCT lung type window we can look for urgent findings such as pneumothorax or pleural effusions. Now I'm taking a sweep through the T1 in-phase axial images. and this I'm looking for anything like failed breath holds that might need to be repeated, or any artifact, or any patient motion that might mean that the composing has failed. In this case, everything looks good. And so we'll go on to look at the T1 fat fraction, which has been auto-generated from the Vibe Dixon images. On this one, the important thing to look out for is any Dixon swaps, which is where the algorithm has failed. You'll notice that's happened at any point if the fat goes black. 
To counter this, you might need to perform a manual reconstruction of the fat fraction using the water images instead of the fat. I've skipped ahead a bit here to show you where I was measuring the fat fractions. By drawing circular regions of interest, you can read the mean values. And when divided by 10, they'll give you an approximate and relative fat fraction value. It's important to note that these fat fractions aren't correct as calibrated by Phantom, so should not be used for absolute measurements. Looking through the B900 images from the diffusion scan, again we're looking for adequate coverage and checking for artifacts such as failed composing. On this scan, you might see urgent findings such as new large volume metastatic disease in the liver, which might be considered a visceral crisis. By fully evaluating the images as they come through, you're better able to support the patient with the care they need at the time of the scan rather than risk the patient deteriorating because of unseen urgent findings. Depending on how your images are sent to PACS, the reporting clinicians might request that you save the B900 images in a separate series. We now need to create our MIPS and MPRs from the B900 images, so we'll click on the Show in 3D button to open the 3D task card. Once we're in the 3D interface, we'll start with some parallel ranges and we'll use a preset that we've already created, which is effectively the complete coronal setting. And we'll start the generation of those and save them. And remember to get in touch with your application specialist if you need any help setting these up. We then move on to the radial ranges and again we'll use the long axis preset. And we've selected 120 images here, so it's going to generate those and we'll save those as well and send them to packs. Remember that any series showing in your series list with a little white man mean they're manually created series and won't be automatically sent if you have auto sending enabled. You'll need to manually send these from the database after the end of the examination when you've chosen save and pause. I'm just fast forwarding through this next part but you can see I go back and check those images that have been created because if anything needs to be repeated, now's the time to do it. And now if we go back to the examination window, you'll see that we've completed all the post-processing before the scan is actually finished. And this is a really important workflow consideration because it means you're not worrying about getting reconstructions done while trying to get the next patient in for their scan. Now's a great time to get up and have a stretch because you've been quite busy over the last 40 minutes. Hopefully you've seen that while the process might seem quite intimidating at first, it's not going to take you long to get the hang of it. And that's it. So three, two, one, and we are finished. I really hope that's been helpful. It's been quite a few years since we did the last one of these, and a lot has changed in the meantime. Remember, you can visit the quantitative whole body MRI webpage at siemens.com forward slash WB MRI for more information, protocol files and written how to guides. Thanks for joining me with this and good luck.